Oh no, you've joined a company only to discover that their test suite takes 30 minutes to run and is composed almost entirely of integration tests. What gives? I'm going to admit it. I like integration tests more than unit tests. I'm CubeDrone, a middle-aged software developer with strong opinions and no data to back them up. And we're going to talk about integration tests. I'm sure you're familiar with this triangle, with UI testing on the top, integration testing in the middle, and unit testing here at the bottom, forming the thick, chunky base of all of your operations. In this model, you're expected to build mostly unit tests, some integration tests, and only rarely are you to build UI tests. You're also expected to run the unit tests more often than the integration tests, and the integration tests more often than the UI tests. Maybe on the tip-top peak of this model, you might have some manual tests performed by real people before you roll out the software completely, but it's barely part of the model. That's the theory, at least. At the last few companies I've worked, the model has been different. This whole chunk of the pyramid is integration tests. It's more of a big rectangle of mostly integration tests. We have a few scattered unit tests here and there, and then, to make sure that the system works end-to-end, -end, we have a much more comprehensive QA pass. So why do projects end up looking like this? Is this bad? I don't think so. I feel like it's common for new engineers to join a project like this and go, where are all the unit tests? The integration tests take so long. Where are all of the UI tests? The QA engineers are working so hard. But as is often the case with real world projects, each one is different and developers find patterns that feel productive to them. So when is a unit test better than an integration test? Here's a hypothetical situation. We have a block of code whose job it is to perform a difficult unit of math, or validate something specific, or modify a PNG file. In cases like this, the code is ideal for unit testing. The complexity exists entirely within the code itself. Its only job is to provide a usable interface to the rest of the system. When is an integration test better? Here's a different hypothetical situation. We have a unit of code whose job it is to represent employee records in a database. It provides functions like create employee, get employee, modify employee, delete employee, and so on. The textbook way to unit test a section of code like this would be to provide it with a mocked out database implementation, then test using that. For example, when we call create employee, the employee model sends the mock database a command that looks like the intended command to create an employee in the database. No database is needed here, just a mock. We're using the mock to validate the model. If you imagine how this test actually looks in your head, you might be imagining that the test code looks almost identical to the code that you'll be testing. I don't want to get too controversial here, but I suspect that this test code might not actually be terribly effective. It's more like you'll be writing a bunch of queries twice. The theory behind unit testing is that if you validate the unit, if the database code can be trusted to work exactly as expected, and separately, the model code calls the database exactly how you expect it to, the likelihood of errors in the final code is much lower. But folks who've worked with database code in particular probably know that the place where errors tend to mount is the nasty part where the query and the data mingle. Your database driver is coming to you from a trusted third-party library, a third-party library that's large, complex, difficult to mock effectively, inscrutable, and presumably pretty stable and well-tested. <laughs> what you're testing is if you are using that library properly, and if you are getting that wrong, you're just as likely to write your unit tests wrong. When we're testing code like this, we're not really interested in the query itself. We're interested in whether or not the query works. Did the query I wrote produce the data I expected? That's when we get into the territory of integration tests. So database-heavy code tends towards integration tests. And most application systems are database heavy. So application systems tend towards lots of integration tests, thus the weird shaped pyramid. We like to test at boundaries. Both of these examples, the database code, which is integration tested, and the ping file code, which is unit tested, reflect a bit of advice I learned from the book, Working Effectively with Legacy Code by Michael Feathers. What you're looking for in your code base is natural boundaries between systems. These are points to bolster with testing. Because a ping generator is loosely coupled to the rest of your system, its interface is going to be really important to get exactly right. So it makes sense to couch it in a lot of unit testing. The interface presented by your backend to your front end 
is an enormous boundary between systems, and it may constitute the most important interface in your entire application. It's also a communication point between teams frequently. So that's obviously a point where it makes sense to test very heavily. And indeed, in a lot of systems I've worked on, they've had the most tests right in the space between front end and back end, the friction point between two massive interconnected systems. I'm going to level with you. For my entire career, I've seen bright-eyed test developers try to concoct a fully automated UI test suite using Selenium or Appium or Mercury Quality Center. Uh, side note, did you know that the reason Selenium is called Selenium is because Selenium is a cure for mercury poisoning? The developers really didn't like Mercury Quality Center, which is fair. Anyways, the goal of the automated UI testing was to build a framework that could smoke test like 5% as well as a real QA person doing a manual test. But even that's kind of a bridge too far. In the companies I've worked at, nobody has ever built anything that isn't just kind of brittle, hard to use, hard to modify, and a total pain in the ass that the team ends up largely ignoring. Automated UI tests are, in my opinion, often not useful. And part of that can be chalked up to how good real QA people are at their job. It's not executing the test plan and clicking the same button the same way every time. Operating software often calls for human-level intelligence. You just can't cut the person out of the equation. If you work at a company that makes actual, practical, reliable use of automated UI testing, sound off in the comments to prove me wrong. So, the test pyramid is mostly just integration tests sometimes. And that's okay. And that's the message of this talk. Every product is different. So long as your testing strategy is serving you well, it's doing its job. How are your test suites shaped? I'd love to hear.